Hi everybody. Just waiting for my Amazon Live to start up. All right. Here we go, we're getting ready. Okay, Aloha Amazon Live, Aloha YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are a regular subscriber of my YouTube channel, whoa, hold on. All right, so um, I really wanna encourage you guys to text me um, on the YouTube live chat, any of your questions that you might have today about certain products. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you, because I'm a shoe repairer, I will be showing you some really great uh, accessories, shoes, and how I, as a professional shoe repairer, repair them. And this might actually give you some really good ideas for your own stuff at home. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see here. I think I really wanna start with the cleaning because I do a lot of that. And this is one of the things that's super easy to do from home. So I got these beautiful bags in and I completely uh, clean the inside and um, of course the outside. And I like to use this Amazon. Um, I bought this product on Amazon and it is on my Amazon shopping cart. And it is the Easy Suede Cleaner. I use it all the time and I always talk about it. So uh, this is the one to get. You actually shake up these little crystals and I like to use a you know old dedicated uh, Tupperware dish. I shake it up, pour a little bit in the dish, and then I go ahead and use my brush to uh, clean the item. And you want to do it a section at a time. So I would do a a part here. I'd probably do this whole panel because uh, this doesn't soak up water very fast. And then I take a towel and wipe it off. But you want to scrub it and get the suds up on this and then you take your towel and you wipe off the suds which is where the dirt and the mold is located is in the suds now and then of course uh, I follow it up using a Cadillac boot and shoe care this is great for leather products primarily um, nothing in suede uh, suede is treated differently you can use this this product though the cleaner for the suede boots. And these were an example, these gorgeous, look at these, these are uh, Gucci's. And I happened to put a new sole on these for her. She's actually traveling to Paris. And so she likes to be able to walk around on the roads lightly, you know, more comfortably. So if you have a cobbler in your area, you could definitely have them do, it's called a crepe or a topi half sole and heel. I put hers in a quarter inch because she wanted a bit more squish. And you can get all kinds of sizes. You can get them from super, super thin um, to a thicker like this. So this was really beautiful. Isn't that just a gorgeous? It has this nice uh, zipper here. She actually has shoe trees in it, which is nice. It keeps them, it takes, it keeps them well. Okay, so here's this gorgeous Prada. I like showing you guys these things because I, you know, my closet's not full of products. <laughs> so I love seeing their designs. I mean, this is a really cool design. It's just so flat. It almost looks like from the, um, you know, um, gosh, you know, really older, older days. I mean, what, 1300s or something when they wore really uh, simple lines. Okay, and then, so we have that Prada. We did this bag, we did the Chanel briefcase. This is just so stunning. So I used to work at Chanel, as I've mentioned before, and in one of their boutiques, and it was super, I got to see these beautiful bags. We actually handled these with white gloves as we were showing the client. Everything is so delicately wrapped in tissue paper and beautiful, and I just love this bag. So I actually, uh, you know, I took out all, the, this woman was smart to store her bag with stuffing. So it really keeps the shape and it came with another cloth bag. So she's using that, I like that. So I went through each one of these and I just thought I'd show you because it's such a durable bag. You know, it's got this nice front pocket and you can tell that this is the briefcase. 
So then on the inside, again, I took out the padding and I went through and cleaned the inside and the outside. But then because of this material, for instance, this liner is a leather liner, very, very durable. In this bag, the liner is like a silk. It's this beautiful or a satin. And so on this bag, on the leather bag, I was able to paint some of the areas that showed a lot of wear. And the paint just disappeared, but it made the scratches go away. And I'll show you what I've used with that. And so for the handbag, I wasn't able to use the paint. I mean, I did around some of this trim area and on the top of the bag, I did just because there were some extra wear marks. So for here, I was able to take the paint all the way into the bottom of the bag. Um, I mean, it looks, it looks brand new, but of course it had the regular wear and tear of, you know, dust, lipstick, stuff like that. So I was able to clean all that out and it looks like a brand new bag now. And so really, really stunning. That's a fun one, fill it back up. And you know, of course I take care that I treat her bag as she would treat it. So we'll stuff that back in there. Okay, so that's really fun. Those are the Chanel's. Now, I got this other bag in for repair and it's a Hermes and it is old, okay? And this is the bag. I mean, it is such a vintage bag. It is sure is fun and it was all collapsed and super dirty. So I actually, you know, of course, to do this cleaner it is so fantastic, the Easy Suede Cleaner. And I, I made sure I got a fresh, fresh little bin of the cleaner so that the cleaner was fresh. And then I went over this whole thing and it actually did lift a lot of dirt. I had to be a little careful because someone had left a pen inside and it has this, it's hard to see, but I didn't want that. The pen wasn't so obvious from the outside and I didn't want it to bleed on more on the outside. So I didn't get right in on that pen down there. Um, and then this one had this kind of a permanent spot here that I wasn't able to get rid of, but it, believe it or not, it actually really lifted a lot of the dirt. And then as far as the actual leather goes on this, it was super dry. Like it looked like if you would have bent it the wrong way, it would have just cracked. And you can see, you know, there's some cracks on here, you know, where it was dry. So after I cleaned it, I went through and I put on a couple of coats of this um, Cadillac boot and shoe leather lotion. And this is what I also treated that Chanel bag with. And this cleans, polishes, protects, and conditions. It's for all colors of leather, vinyl, reptile, and other exotic skins. So just no suede, right? So anyway, and then I actually, because the bag had its own collapsed position. I mean, look at how it's like a box, right? So what I did is while it was wet, I went ahead and let's see here. So I went ahead and put it, I washed the inside too. So I put it upside down. I, it's a shoe jack that I have and it's like a, it's long like this and a long thing. So I just set this over it and it gave it that shape. And it, I let it dry like that, just to double, and I went and double checked it to make sure it didn't have little, you know, odd pukas sticking out. So anyway, so that's really fun. And this was a Hermes. I'm excited for the client to see it because I don't think she realizes how great it's gonna look. All right, so I'm just gonna check in, see who's chatting with us. Hold on a second. Jennifer Lude started following. Hey, Jennifer, thank you for following. Awesome, I liked your emoji. <laughs> okay, so uh, we did the conditioners, we did the cleaner. And then, like I said, sometimes you have to take it to that next level where polishing and dyeing doesn't work. And that it was, this is a great example of that. So if you haven't seen this video that I did on YouTube, it was, this used to be white and I dyed it, polished it, but that gets tricky because dye and polish almost never comes off all the way. And if you're wearing it, it would definitely rub 
on your garment. So I went ahead and painted it and I painted it with the Angelus black leather paint. This paint is really nice because it's water-based, it's easy to clean up, and it's flexible. So it's a great thing for leather, you know, it can bend without creating cracks. So anyway, I really love it. And isn't this sweet? I mean, just what a cute little fanny pack, you know? Um, so I, she loves it and she does bring it in for touch-ups because over time, I mean, I think I fit, did this the last time about two years ago, and it did start to rub some of this off and you could see a little bit. So I just did a touch up for her, a complimentary touch up because she's a great client. As a matter of fact, moving on, let's look at her shoes. <laughs> so she must have, I asked her how many pairs she had and I think, I don't recall what she said, but this is one of her collection as well as this. I mean, how sassy is this shoe? Oh my gosh, right? I mean, look at that, I love it. And of course it's a Louboutin. And um, you know, Angelus, the paint company, also sells a bunch of their paint colors. This one, they're showing this as being the Louboutin exact match, but they're not usually. I would really, if you wanna get, the, if this is more of a bluish red, and so I actually, buy a different color and, and do these. Sometimes I'll do a custom match, but I want it to look nice. However, so what she does is she brings these in so I can put this taupey half sole in red, right? Isn't that nice? So now this really thin sole, I mean, that sole is super thin. And if you're walking on that a lot, you're gonna wear right through it. And now you've got to get a new leather half sole. Well, to avoid doing that, go to your cobbler and have them put one on professionally, or you can buy these. Now see, this is nice. This is that bluish red, and this matches the bottom of the Louboutin. And you can just get them and put them right in the center, something like that. You can cut them custom if they're too big. Like this is probably too big, so you could do it custom. You just wanna make sure that when you're doing it yourself that you get the edges that you wear you know, that you're actually walking on, like these spots tend to rub out pretty quickly, okay? So that's pretty standard. I like to take my repair to the next level. So what I do is, for instance, this is a great example. When this shoe came into me before the rib, this, this new half sole, it had a black edge, just like you see that comes with the shoe, it's a black edge. Well, by the time I put on this taupey half sole and sand it really smooth so it just blends in, it wears off the black paint. So I like to go back and paint the black trim. So that way you can't see the red as you're wearing it, which is what they intended when they designed the shoe, but yet you still get the surprise afterward. So I used the um, Angelus Black to trim it and then of course, I, I love my huge assortment of paint brushes. <laughs> so depending on, I put a link in the Amazon carousel for my favorite paint brushes and they come in blue and pink. So I just, I buy them by the five pack because I use them all the time. And once I have, for instance, once I have a dye dedicated that I used a brush with, you can't really reuse that brush again for something else without that color carrying forward. So um, I just make it select for my dye. Now let's move on because that actually takes me to, um, to the next step of like really doing an amazing job shining and caring for your shoes, okay? So whether you're a woman or a man, if you've got a lovely selection of dress shoes, for instance, these guys, okay? They look really nice right now. They didn't look like this when they came in here. OMG. This shoe is so old. It's, it's so old. It was super dry leather. You know, close up, you can tell it's got these dry leather cracks, which I think I've corrected, um, but a really super thin sole. And it had a huge hole in here and where the guy had worn it. I mean, this was all coming apart. And so I gave them a new leather half sole and heel. And then I went ahead and I dyed it. And for this, this is called Marine Cordovan. 
okay really it's a really handsome color that they used to use a lot um so this is a uh bruno magli and i used i first i cleaned it then i conditioned it a lot okay then i went ahead and did a leather dye so i dyed it and i used the cordovan it was the perfect color and with cordovan um, and i like the brushes because i like to be able to get inside these little cracks here so um that's what i like to use that for these angelus dyes come with a dauber included in the box and the box looks like this but you actually take and punch the hole in the back put your dye in there and then i like to put my brushes and they sit on the shelf so after i dyed it then i went through with a cream polish from money's worth best which is also in the shopping carousel and i'll put the links down below for my youtube viewers and this is a moisturizer for the leather but it has a little bit of a tint okay so it actually nourishes the leather even more and then i don't wipe that off i left that in there and i went ahead and finished it off with the uh, maureen cordovan uh, lincoln stain wax okay it's really great and i love to use my horsehair applicators they make life so much easier if you are going to invest in a shoe shine kit get this i did put in the amazon shopping carousel a choice of money's worth best that has two choices it comes with black and then another one comes with a white so um, you can do browns and blacks okay that's a good way to start you know, I know it's kind of crude, but I just put everything I need in one pile. So when I did, uh, and I separate them by colors. So here's this beautiful men's Cole Haan, who, which also did not look like this when it came in. It was pretty beat up. He had worn through the heels. I built them up. And then of course I dyed them because it really penetrates and gives that dark luster. Then I went ahead and did my money's worth cream polish left that on there and see i just take a little uh, old t-shirt that i've cut up and use that to apply it and then i go through and i i come back with the lincoln stain wax and the black and of course my trusty hair horse hair dauber right it makes it easy to get around especially all of these like little tassels it makes it so much easier to get in there and then of course i buff it off with one of my horse hair brushes Okay, these are so ancient. I've had them forever. All right, so that's my uh, shoe shine kit. And like I said, I, I personally have it divided by color because I do so many shines in a month. And for those of you that uh, are just checking in, I am Terry Edmonds. I own my own store in Maui, Hawaii called If The Shoe Fits. I do boots and I sell boots and shoes and sandals, but I'm also the island's only shoe repair and i do all kinds of really cool stuff i get to see these really neat, neat designs so let's keep moving on and we're going to get now to um if you've got let's see we covered those oh yeah i show you with the polish so this is this gorgeous she's one of my regular vips and this beautiful uh, prada boot isn't that gorgeous and this was an interesting brown color so i didn't put brown on it i actually put a neutral on this just to give it the nourishment of the moist you know the moisturizer kind of cream and then buffed it out with a neutral brush and i put new heel caps on there for her and these were another one where um they actually this brand is no longer in existence and it's pretty popular i've gotten these over the years what really well made and I put on a non-slip half sole here. And I also put a non-slip on the heel just so that she can keep the integrity of the original sole. All that has to happen when you wear through these is you, you know, your cobbler peels it off, sands it and puts a new one, shapes it. Now, when I shaped it, the same thing happened with that um, Louboutin was that it took away the black edging. So I went ahead I put my topi on and then I went around with my Angela's black paint, I kid you not, and just trimmed it out very del delicately, making sure not to get the gray suede. And I also cleaned this shoe, this suede shoe, with my cleaner for her. And when the suede dries and your shoe's all done with suede especially, you can take your dry 
nylon brush and just sweep the nap, okay? It softens it and you can kind of change the color, the direction, when you change direction, it kind of changes the color of the suede. Let's see, it's nice. It gives it a nice consistent look. Boom, you're done. She's gonna love it. So I'm very excited. Okay, then um, another one which was kind of fun was this. This is another VIP of mine. She has the sweetest, yummiest, most non conservative shoes. She does the colors. Whenever I brought in like a Manalo Blahnik, they're like beautiful pieces of art, okay? And I thought this was really sweet. You know, this is a suede. And then they have this like satin, you know, upper. I put on a new half sole so that she doesn't wear through it. I did this to two pairs that she's got here, but you know, when you are looking for shoes, whether they're $11 or $1,100, it's always amazing to look at the detail and when they put things into these seams, how they keep them from wrinkling and just the, the oh, I mean, this has stitching down the back of that heel that is just fantastic, really wonderful shoe. So this would be really great and I'm gonna do it with you. I like to put this, my, um, this is my Cadillac Shield and it is actually a Scotch Guard for light things like this. So I'm just gonna put some Scotch Guard on that to keep it clean for her. And I'm also gonna do that for this nice suede boot because she's gonna be tromping around, you know, Paris. So I just do a nice little, a little dirt on there. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We love that. Let's just do the other one since we're here. Get that for her, right? We'll let that dry. And why not do this one? I just cleaned it for her. Let's make it stay nice for her. It won't discolor. There's that and we'll do this one too. I mean, we could even scotch guard this bag here on the top so that when they use it again, it won't get dirty like that. Do another one over here, a little something. Easy peasy. All right. Now, just a, one last thing. Oh yeah, this is fun. One of the other things I do, I do a lot of belts. So this is an old Gucci that has become delaminated here. And it's a real pain to try to laminate these again. So I just ordered a brand new belt blank from Amazon and I'm just going to refit this and it'll be like new. And I like to order the leather that's one piece so it doesn't split on you, okay? So that's nice. Now, something else that I have in the Amazon shopping carousel is a list of rubber soling material. I get this question a lot, and so there are different ways you can use it. You can either use it for Birkenstocks. I used a Birkenstock material, but it's the same stuff, okay? Um, so you, and especially this is for those people that have Birkenstocks, because you guys asked me about it. So um, I put a little bit of clear coat on here which is called the, I had a bottle. Where are you? Oh, this is it right here. Cork Renew. It really, it's very similar to like Elmer's glue. You know how it was white when you got it out of the bottle, but it turned clear. That's basically the same thing. It goes on white and it turns clear. I happened to, I think the client had done that before. So I sanded the old buildup off. So it got this nice raw finish. Then I put the uh, Renew on it, and then I let it dry. So that's really fun. And I gave her a new sole, of course. Okay, so the other thing is I got this really cute Chanel Hello Ballerina Slipper. This is also that client who's going to Paris. <laughs> so I she wanted more cushion, so I went with a quarter inch and added a cushion to this. And... Hi, Sidney Bert. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, okay? Anyway, so uh, this was kind of interesting to do because you, you know, I didn't want to ruin the flexibility, so I did a half sole. It had the rounded heel part, so I, I cut that custom, sanded it first before it went on the shoe. All right, so that's pretty fun. A nice little Chanel. She'll be able to kick those around for sure, um, all over Paris. I hope she sends me a refrigerator magnet. <laughs> That's what I collect. Okay. 
So anyway, uh, we've got the Chanel's. Now, I also have this client that loves her Michael Kor. And the Michael Kor Soul Original Soul had completely disintegrated. It was plastic, so I rebuilt it to look the same. And I went with about an eighth, it's a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch soling material. Oh, you know, I think it's time for me to go to work, you guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. I love you. I appreciate you guys for subscribing. And that's my cue. Aloha from Maui.